Hey, this is Tom. Welcome to the shop. I'm working on a project right now that I thought you might find interesting. I have a client who came to me and, like they sometimes do, and had a magazine with a photo from, this is from Thomas Moser Furniture, and they wanted this desk. Thomas Moser, they make some really nice um, shaker style, mostly furniture. Now it's gotten more contemporary. But they have this radius desk in here, and he really liked that, but wanted it customized and for me to do some original things. So uh, here it is. Here's what I've got so far. And you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but these legs, instead of just being flat, tapered like shaker legs would be, I've got just a soft kind of curve to the surfaces, which you call pillowing. And the same with these rails, they're pillowed as well. And then in the back, the Thomas Moser desk, you see, has a, an apron that's probably only three or four inches high. But I made a much deeper apron for this large curve. And this is about seven inches deep. And this is just made of eighth inch cherry, solid cherry, that was laminated around a form. But I didn't want to get into that too much today. What I really wanted to show you most of all is the drawer arrangement. Um, the Thomas Moser drawer arrangement is just a little, kind of a narrower drawer here that goes straight in and out. And you can see why they had to do that because the desk starts to curve in so quickly that you can't use a conventional drawer or it you know, you don't really have much room to go with it. So they just brought the drawer in narrower, so you have a narrower drawer that makes at least a short entry. But I thought that was kind of uh, limited. So I tried to come up with something else. And what, what I decided to do was have a pivoting drawer that would actually swing out and mirror, back mirror, the curvature of this inside curve. So here's the drawer. Kind of an interesting shape. This again is laminated oak. And we've got the corners are dovetailed traditionally. This drawer is not glued up yet. So I haven't really cleaned it down. And then on this back corner you can see there's dovetailed as well. Let me put it in and show you how it works. What I've got here is I drilled a 5 16 hole and drove in these bronze sleeves, which are a quarter inch on the inside dimension. And that bronze is like impregnated with oil. So it works terrific as a kind of a guide for this quarter inch steel pin, which will be the axis we'll rotate on. So let me see if I can get this set in here. There. So that's it. That's pretty <laughs> close to the way it's going to be. Then we, it will just swing out and pivot right on that axis. So I've still got to get a piece down here for it to support on. But that's basically how it'll look. So you get much more room in here. And mostly it's kind of elegant the way it swings out. And you have this reverse curving and this interplay of curves. So the drawer is just one more element of curves in this design. It's pretty cool. Well, let me show you how I put the drawer together. Let's go over to the bench and take a look. All right, I want to show you how that drawer was made. And um, to make a complicated drawer like this that has curves and basically triangular shaped, you need to do a full-size drawing from the top view. So I have a large drawing over the other side of the room that I won't bother showing you right now. But basically, it's the same shape as this drawer is. Without that, I would have a tough time finding the angles for the different corners and knowing what radius I need for the, the curved side as well. So let me show you some of the parts. This is the left side drawer. And you can see that the hole in the bushing 
with the um, bronze insert is already in there. And so this is the corner that it will be pivoting on. I didn't want this dovetail depth to be too much that it would weaken that uh, pin. So I only went, you know, about 5 sixteenths deep. Now this drawer has this strong angle. So really it wasn't that complicated. I just cut that angle on the end of the board and then using a marking gauge just like you typically do cutting dovetails, I scribed down both sides and got my angle. Then I notched that inside so I could hold it up against the board here and then knifed around the tails after I had cut them. So what you end up with, let me tap this in, is a nice dovetail corner like that. But we still got this little issue of the overhang here. It was easier to construct it with that still on. So once I'm getting ready to glue this up, so in order to test it in the opening, I have to cut these off. And then once I glue it up, everything will look really clean together. Well, let's take it to the vise and clean that up. So for this, I just use a little Lee Nielsen block plane, set fine. And this is kind of fun. Let me get a little more aggressive here. Okay, I'm getting close, so I'm going to back off just a little bit. back off that much. There, that's nice. So now you can see we've got this complex looking joint that really wasn't that difficult to make once you had the angles established. So when that's glued up, I'll give it a, another planing, clean it up really nicely. It'll look beautiful. So here's the, this is the front corner that's exposed when the door s swings out. So that's the most decorative of all the corners. Just going to tap that in. Okay, now I've got the back corner here, which overlaps. And these joints were just almost exactly 90 degrees. And I made these drawer sides out of white oak and laminated this back out of four layers that are actually thinner than an eighth to make like three eighths inch sides all around. So you can see how nicely that's going to look when it's all glued up. But here's the question. I need a drawer bottom in here that's not solid wood because we're going to get, that would be way too much movement to work inside a triangular frame that's closed like that. So I've already routed this dado, you can see, and I'm going to put in a solid panel drawer bottom that'll be veneered. But I was thinking, which direction should the grain go for the bottom to be veneered? I got to thinking about it. It would be pretty interesting if I had almost like a sunburst, maybe three pieces of a sunburst white oak veneer to, do, to make the bottom. So let's get started. Let me make those right now.
Okay, so we got our drawer bottoms done and shaped and fitted into each one. And you can see we've got that three-piece veneer match, kind of like a sunburst, but using this rift-sawn, very straight-lined white oak veneer. On the bottom, I just went straight. But on the top, we want to see that fanning effect. So check it out over here. This is how it's going to look when you open the drawer. You can see the fanning effect to kind of fill the cone as it comes out. I think that's a sweet look. That's one of the fun things about custom furniture is you don't always know where you're going when you start. And some of these details you fill in as you go so that the details are appropriate to the whole and what you've got going to that point. So here we've got a lot of interplay with curves. So it seemed like a good opportunity to make a sunburst like fan shape inside there. The last thing I got to figure out is what kind of knob to put on this drawer. And I'm still thinking that through right now. Uh, it doesn't seem appropriate to put a center knob because your force, you really need to pull it on this side. And it'd be a little awkward to have a knob sticking down here. So we could have two knobs and just assume you pull this one. That's one option. The other one I'm thinking about is putting a, like a, a um, kind of a hidden finger hold up here. So you would reach under. The top will overhang about almost an inch here. And your fingers would come under and catch this lip that would easily pull the drawer out. And I could do like a, a dovetail right in here. So it would be kind of sweet looking. But I haven't really developed that whole idea. But we'll get this after a few more details. We'll get it in the finishing room. And um, we'll get it down to the finishing room. And I'll catch up with you down there. And we'll see how it looks at that point. Hey, welcome back. It's Tom here. We fast forwarded and actually got done the finishing stage on this piece, this desk. And let's take a look. Here it is. We've got a catalyzed lacquer on the top frame. And on the base, I've got shellac, which I rub out and then wax. The lacquer gives more durability up here on the frame. And then these sweet little uh, shaker style knobs. I actually um, turn those and um, myself and then a wedge gets driven in from behind with some glue. So those are in there for good. But the real thing I want to show you is how our little decision on the veneering of the drawer came out. So here we go. Check it out. What do you think? You can see kind of that sunburst. And then the drawers just pivot on the pin. And then they hit a nice leather covered stop. Let's check the other side out. Same deal. That's sweet. Now you really see the dovetails pop better in this nice courtesan laminated white oak side. And then getting these leather panels was a trick. I've got a nice technique that I'm going to talk about in a future video on making a perfect panel like this. And you can actually purchase leather fairly cheaply these days. So a desk like this is well within your reach. So it's delivery day for this desk, and I'm excited to get it in the client's hands. Always a little tired at the end of a project like this. The shop is a mess. I'm trying to dress up, look presentable. But I'm excited to get it out to that home and see it in that environment. This is Tom for Epic Woodworking, signing off. See you next time.